This is a time of worship to the Lord. We just continue on with the worship and the time of giving of the word. And we thank you, Father God, for great grace upon us tonight in the name of Jesus, that the Holy Spirit moves, that I'm led by your spirit. I am your son in Jesus' name to give the word in due season for people that's coming on with us tonight and those on YouTube and all over the internet. And we just thank you, Father, for utterance in the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. As I prepared, as I was in worship, I had a word. Let me see here. Yeah, let's see. Okay, we're, we are live. Okay, I had a word for someone, and uh, it comes from a, a very difficult place that I went through, but this is word really is going to hit home with someone concerning this thing of having sins against them in the area of, of uh, envy. You see, envy was one of those things that's a very subtle and very difficult spirit to deal with. Because a lot of us have a lot of love in our hearts as saints of God. We have a lot of empathy towards others, and we want to help everybody. You got a big heart. I'm talking to a lot of folks that have a lot, have, have had, I just saw a picture of your heart. Your heart, um, you, you, you had it out and you gave it. You gave it in service. You gave it in love and you gave it unconditionally to those that you really loved and someone in particular broke your heart. It's even come in a form of uh, physical uh, where you felt that your heart was going to pound out of your chest. This area is a broken heart. It's not that you have a heart disease or anything like that. It's because you have a broken heart. Thank you, Father. Thank you Lord. Thank you, you've taken your good and you've given your best. God saw that and God blessed you. God was pouring blessings in your life. He was pouring on you and pouring on you, blessing after blessing after blessing. And one of those that were really close to you became envious of your blessings, turned on you, used you, abused you, and threw you away. You lost a lot. You lost so much. And this has to do with this area of envy we're talking about tonight. This is for you. Is the Lord speaking to someone? He loves you. And it's not God that did that to you. I saw this heart and it was broken. It was in fragments all over the ground. God tonight is going to pick up some of those pieces and put this heart back together. It's going to be a journey, yes. It's going to be a journey into, into your healing and setting proper boundaries with others in love, but protecting your heart, for out of it comes the issues of life. You're going to have to learn not everybody has your best interest at heart. Not everybody's pure in their approach to life, in their approach to others. They've lied about you. They've turned close friends against you. You've had to walk away. Your heart is broken, but God loves the broken heart. He's come to set you free. And to love you. Last week we talked about this area of envy. It's a devastating spirit. Devastates homes. Devastates relationships of all kinds. Devastates churches. Devastates communities. God wants to heal our hearts tonight. Thank you, Lord. 
this person that I've been talking about, and it is, it's more than one, it's many, and it could apply to most anyone. Most of us have gone through very difficult situations in life because of the ones that we loved that didn't love us back purely. Used us, abused us, and kicked us out. We've closed our hearts many, many, many ways to others that could be a real blessing to us because of this pain. And God wants to heal that. He wants to give you back this childlike faith and this childlikeness to be open again with close others around you. Not to wall your heart off because when you wall yourself off from others, trusted others, you become an island to yourself and even God isn't able to get through because you walled yourself off so much you don't even feel his presence as much as you used to anymore. You know he's there, but his presence still feels a bit a long ways off and God wants to pull you close tonight. You see, there's something about this generation. I've heard several years ago that there was a Joseph generation. We heard a lot about the Joseph generation. And we heard a lot about the wealth of the wicked being stored up for the just. Well, what we haven't talked about much about the Joseph generation is what Joseph went through in order to have the anointing the wisdom, and the power to justify that kind of wealth being released to him. God's going to reveal some things to us tonight. Thank you, Lord. But first of all, we've got to get our hearts and our souls healed because it says that if your soul is healed, then you prosper. Paul said, I wish above all that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. We've seen some of that in our group, in our church group here, how that some of these words uh, about confidence and building our confidence and not throwing our, our confidence and learning to walk in the confidence of the Holy Spirit, we've seen uh, uh, miracles take place in this area. And we're thankful for the miracle that we've just learned about last week. And we thank you, Lord, for it. So the soul is the mind, will, and the emotions. And this place is the place where we get tracked up with the world. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. We love, but not the way the world loves. The world loves with me first. Me first. And it, it'll step on. And actually, many people with the love of the world and the wisdom of this world is foolish, is, is a dark place for the child of God. Because the wisdom of this world would say that the honorable thing is whatever it takes to make a buck. That's not the way the children of God are. Because we're not given to greed. We're given selfishness, selflessness and not selfishness. We think about others and put others uh, ahead of ourselves many times. We're led by the Spirit. Now, one part of this thing about greed and, and envy that we can protect ourselves is being led by the Spirit. See, you had good intentions, but your soul was in charge. Your spirit man needs to take charge. Your spirit man is where God lives. If you're led by the Spirit, if you're led by the Spirit, you won't, be, you, you won't follow a wolf that will devour you. You won't follow them. You won't go along with them. You won't marry them. You won't give your, you give your best to the cruel because you're led by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit's not lead you to give your best to the cruel. So be led by the Spirit. Listen to that still small voice that comes upon the inside of you. This person isn't a safe person. You don't need to be giving your goods to this person. This person isn't going to be safe. Listen to that check on the inside of you when it comes up on the inside of you about what you're doing. 
Don't just keep on going until that check is released. Unless you have a peace about it, don't continue on going that direction. Have a peace about what you're doing. Just don't do it because it sounds good. Or maybe this person's more talented than you think you are. Many times we fall into great traps and great temptations and great, tem uh, great tests and trials come upon our lives just because we're not led by the Spirit. So those are the sons of God are led by the spirits of God, Spirit of God. And we're learning how to do this. We're learning how to walk in the Spirit. So, thank you, Lord, for utterance. Now, I have many people online with me um, that can be praying, uh, praying for this message, that it goes out, and that the anointing be on me. You just pray for me right there in your living room. Thank you, Lord, or here in our living room. Thank you, Lord. So we, we're talking about the Joseph anointing. So we'll just talk about a little bit about Joseph and what he went through to receive the wealth of the wicked, to receive the wealth of the world. See, many of us don't know the price, and this is where envy comes in a lot of times with people because we don't know the price that the other person went through to have what they have. Never judge the book by its cover. You don't know what that person's been through in order to have the gifting, the anointing, and the wisdom that they have. They may have gone through a great deal to have what they have. So never envy another man or another woman. The thing about envy is that it'll hold you back. Before I get into Joseph, I'm gonna to go to um, the place where Jesus talks about, and I'm not gonna go there in the Bible, we talked about it last week, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna just briefly go over this. Jesus talked about giving out the different um, talents, and these talents were, um, in those days they had a certain coin that was called a talent, and it's worth a great amount of money. And so he gave out a certain amount to each person that, according to their ability. So God not just looks at uh, giving you a certain amount of money and trusting you a certain amount of money, but also looking at your ability and what you're able to do with what he gives you. So these resources and so forth came to Joseph because he, was, he probably was that guy with the 10 talent or the five talents and created 10 talents out of it because he was faithful in everything he did. So this, uh, this uh, place where Jesus says to the unjust servant, he says, uh, take his talent and give it to the one with, with the 10, that turn his from five into 10, give his talent to him. The reason why he's able to do, the reason why Jesus did that, because he already had 10, why is he giving him the other? Why didn't he give it to the guy with the uh, four, uh, two, two talents and made it four talents? Well, God gives it to the person he sees that can handle the talent and the giftings and the, 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 the resources that he hands out. So uh, if we want to come in a place, there's a, there's, there's a ways to build up to this place where God can trust you with these different um, resources and so forth. And it's called being faithful with the little. It's called being faithful with little. Many times we want to have this um, big mansion. We want to have the sports car. We want all the flash. God may even want to take that out of your heart in order to give you what he wants to give you. It may, may be much better than that. Most likely it is. So um, the things that Joseph went through uh, and, and back, to the, back to the guy with the, with the one talent. See, I believe that one of the, the ways, because this man buried his talent in the earth and said that he, uh, he, wasn't, um, he didn't want to spend that talent uh, because he wanted to give it back to the master and um, out of fear, he put it in the earth. But I think there was another fear that was inside of him that was more than just fear. I believe that there could be that he buried it in the earth because of envy. Because all the rest of them got, it seems like, so much more talent and more resources than what he did. He found it unfair, 
So rather than uh, investing his time and energy to cause his talent to grow, he actually took that talent and buried it and envied the others. That's the reason why I believe when Jesus said, let's, let's just go over to that scripture, if I can find it real quick here. Uh, it is in Matthew, in Matthew 25, 29 is the, where I, the Lord highlighted this to me today. Uh, it says, and he's talking about the unjust servant that buried, his, uh, buried it in his talent in the ground. For to everyone who has, more will be given. Think about that. For everyone that has, and Jesus spoke in parables, so you got to read between the lines of what he's actually saying. And this is where it ties into envy. You'll see this in a minute. For everyone that has, more will be given. More will be given. Get this. And he will have abundance. So the person that uses his talents may not be much, but he's using it. God caused it to be abundant. God will cause you to flourish as you use your talents, uses your ability, use your resources for the glory of God. He will cause it to grow. More will be given and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, this is where envy comes in, for him that does not have, even what he has will be taken away. Even what he has will be taken away. Get this. This is what the Lord told me about this. Envy in, per, in a person, uh, you, you, okay, let me back up. Okay, so when, you, when a person's given over to envy, they try to be somebody they're not. They're trying to consume somebody else that they think this other person is, but even that is a mirage. They don't even know who that person really is, but what they perceive this person to be, that's who they try to be. And they try to consume that other person. That's what envy does. It consumes you with someone else. You consume yourself with someone else and what they have, what they are, who they are, I think you get what I'm saying. That's an envious person. This keeps your gifts from flourishing. You'll never flourish in your gift as long as you're trying to be somebody else's gift. You'll never flourish in what God has called you to do trying to be what God's called someone else to be. I've used this as an illustration before, but it's true to be said again. Amy and I have been out to the graveyard and we saw all the graves, hundreds of thousands, and maybe, maybe 10, 20 generations of people that have passed on. I've just talked to somebody before church how short things are and how it's so important to be about the Father's business while well, it's time while you have time, while you still have breath, while you still have energy, it's good to be about the Father's business. So this thing of, of going to the graveyard and seeing all these graves that represent all these people that live their life, their, their life either uh, for themselves in envy or being after the Father's business, allowing the Holy Spirit to lead them and what they're supposed to do with their life, and I'd say most people, most people that, uh, that, that, that pass on have not even tapped into one step of the direction that God, the direction that God has preordained for their life. Not even one step. I have no idea. And for me to even talk to them about it, it'd be foreign. So that's where we got to change. Many people in the church think they're supposed to come to church and just warm a pew, 
hear a good message and go home without really a heart change. Every time we come together, I want to grow. I want to get beyond the things of the past, those areas that have held me back. And that's the reason why I am giving you my best every Saturday to try to pull you up, to try to get you where you no longer have these things, where it's wrapped around your ankles and you can't run anymore. You can't run. And this is the area that we're talking about tonight that's gonna, that hinders a lot of people is the area of envy. And we're talking about the area of envy, not where you have yielded to envy yourself towards others, but where others have envied you. This area has very rarely been talked about. Yes, it's real easy to see the, the sin of envy and maybe not when it first starts, but as it grows, it becomes very apparent that this person makes no sense. They're not about my good. They're hateful. They despise me. They dislike everything that I stand for, and they're trying to be me. And they're running me down behind my back with all my friends, with all my family, And I'm not the gossip type. I don't go back and try to defend myself. But many of you know what I'm talking about. This is the spirit of envy that takes over a person's life. And they come underneath this, this spirit called Leviathan, which is the a prince of all the, um, the ones that walk in pride. Remember I told you that envy is not just a regular everyday spirit. It's a spirit that's very, that's, I believe is a principality. And I believe it really actually operates in certain areas more than others. A lot of people think that envy, they wear it, they wear it as a badge, as if the envy that they saw and they, they saw these other people being successful and they wanted to be like them, and they allowed envy to come in, and it consumed their life. It consumed, and I was just talking to a friend of mine before service about this, about this area of having the nice car, nicest car, having the biggest house, and having all these things. You see, we start envying in order to get, and it's a, it's a worldly uh, self-promotion, and so it, you get energy from it, uh, worldly energy, that you push yourself and you push and push and push in order to get what you're trying to achieve. But this is worldly wisdom. This is not the wisdom that's from, a, from above. It's a devilish wisdom. Any kind of greed where you're greedy and you would consume another person on yourself, making uh, whatever their ideas, your ideas, stealing their ideas, stealing... Um, stealing their personality, stealing who they are, you trying to become them, that's envy. You'll never be able to be them. These are the areas that bring pain into our lives. These are the type of people that are areas, uh, people in our lives that may be, part of our, may be part of our immediate family. We may have grown up with them. We may have... Um, we may have... Uh, gone to school with them. We may even gone to church with them. But just because you have had them in your life and you knew them, you thought you knew them very well, but when you start succeeding, when your gift starts really flourishing, you need to be careful because that, that's when you will truly find out who your real friends are. When you start succeeding and prospering, you will know who your friends are. And many times before the real, uh, the real blessing that God's wanting to give you, he will test you with a small, small amount of favor, a small amount of favor, just to test those around you so that you're ready to take on the real blessing that God's trying to send to you. So let that be something of encouragement that I've experienced in my own life, and I know there's many others experienced it like Joseph. Joseph, when he was a young man, he received the favor of his father. He received the favor of his father, 
And I, I won't go into the whole story because it'd take me a long time to read the whole story to you. So I'm gonna kind of bit in pieces. But if you wanna read and do a study into the life of Joseph in the area of en envy, I would encourage you to do so. It's in uh, uh, Genesis, the last part of the book talks about Joseph. And it just talks it straight on through when they go back, go back to Egypt. But if you take the last, I think probably four or five chapters of the book of Genesis, talks all about Joseph. And then the other person I would study would be the life of David. And we'll talk a little bit about David too, the Lord permitting. But let's talk about Joseph and then also Daniel. You know, where uh, Daniel was with the lions. Uh, he got thrown in the lion's den because of envy. Uh, all these people spoke against Daniel because they envied the wisdom of God on his life. They spoke against him and the king actually had to, uh, had to throw him in the lion's den because of a trick that the people of Babylon tried to play or played the king because of his weakness uh, and his um, ego got in his way and he made a law out of, his, out of the ego that these guys were uh, stroking and fanning into flame, his ego. So the king fell into a trap with that and caused Daniel to be in a place where he would never bow to an idol. And it cost Daniel, because of the, the king's decree, it cost Daniel to be thrown into a den of lions. Proverbs says, if, if uh, your enemy digs out a hole or a pit for you, that that enemy would end up falling into his own pit. And that's exactly what happened to Daniel. Their envy caused them to, the, the, Daniel to escape the mouth of the lion because Daniel stayed faithful to his God in the middle of the test. And all of those people that came against him fell into the pit and were, were thrown into the pit and they were consumed by the lions, the same lions the night before Daniel was um, sleeping right beside them. So God's able to deliver us out of the mouth of the lions. Many of us have gone uh, through the lion's den and been untouched. You know, you have stories. I have stories of being through many situations where the Lord's delivered me out of all the trouble that came my way and the Lord actually caused the person that caused the trouble to fall into their own pit. So I know many of us have those type stories. Let's go back to the life of Joseph. And many of us, like I've said, many of us have had this idea of the Joseph anointing and how God wants to entrust us with finances and resources for the kingdom of God, not to hoard on ourselves, uh, not to prove how spiritual we are because of the, the abundance that God gives us, but because of our love for him, that he trusts us with the hearts of others and be able to be a good resource for the kingdom of God. So anyhow, that was, this was Joseph. Joseph found favor, first of all, uh, God placed a great amount of favor before he was ever born. God knew before he was born that he was going to need great favor, great favor on his life in order to fulfill the call that God was, God was placing on his life. So sometimes we can tap into that favor prematurely. And uh, especially if we have brothers and sisters that are bent to envy. And I know what that's like to be my father's favorite son. I was favored by my dad. My dad thought I hung the moon. He thought I was the smartest. He was that I was the best kid in his house and I was one of five. I got arrows in my back all the time. Siblings that were jealous. It's true. Very difficult and very difficult things I've gone with, gone through after being grown and out of the house and on my own because of siblings. All of us have, can identify with that because all of us dealt with brothers and sisters. Maybe not your own siblings, but maybe those that are um, uh, maybe uh, of the household of God, maybe your work, uh, different places, you've noticed that you've had this favor on your life and other people are envious of that favor. So Joseph experienced this. Joseph experienced this in uh, his family where his dad created a coat of many colors. Now, 
This would be like uh, one dad going down to the store and getting, uh, I, don't know what the, I don't know what the things are today that are, are practical or, or not practical, but the biggest deal in school nowadays of what the kids like. But whatever that is, he got the best of the best of any uh, wardrobe of his brothers and, and, and his other siblings. He got the best, tailor-made for him. And his dad gave it to him. Right in front of all of his brothers, all of his siblings, all of them seeing the favor that's on Joseph. This favor that his father poured out on Joseph. Joseph would get the better portions at the mills. It was all about Joseph. Joseph, Joseph this, Joseph that. He was so proud of his, his son, Joseph. In fact, Joseph would come back to his dad tattling on his brothers. Doesn't go well with siblings. But they hated him. Their, their bitterness, their, uh, their bitterness towards him turned into to, to hatred. And then a murderous spirit entered them. They hated and they wanted to kill him. So one day, Joseph is sent out by his dad to go check on the family business, to go check on his brothers and give him back a report about what's going on. Joseph uh, uh, is walking around in the field and a man comes up to him and tells him where his, his brothers are. His brothers had moved on from that place where he, they, they had said they were going to be. And they went to a town called Dothan. And Dothan was supposed to have a little bit better pasture lands. So they went there. And uh, when Joseph got close, his brothers saw, them, saw him from a distance. Saw Joseph coming. Said, oh boy, here comes that dreamer. That dreamer had some dreams that the brothers didn't take very kindly to and just stirred up the resentment in their hearts even more. Many of you know the story. And many of us can identify with the dreams, the dreams that we've had, we've shared with others that just made them jealous, even more jealous of us. Joseph had dreams that his brothers would one day bow down to him. He had two dreams. Usually when, and this is probably well known in those days when God gave you a dream and he put two, he gave you two back to back and they meant the same thing and it was just gonna surely happen. So uh, Joseph had these dreams and he shared them with the wrong people. So God shows us in this place that God wants to bring his saints to in the place of inheriting the wealth of the wicked, we may need to go through some of this, not share some of the secrets that God's placed in our hearts. Not with just anyone. Be careful. Be careful who you share your heart with and the dreams that God's placed in them. Not everyone has the best intentions for you. So uh, Joseph, um, I'll, I'll speed up the story a little bit because what they do when, when, when he does come close, they snatch him and throw him into, they decide to kill him. And then one of the brothers said, no, 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 don't, don't kill him because his blood's gonna be on our hands and, and it's gonna bring much shame on us. Let's not kill him. Let's throw him into a, a well, uh, an empty well. See, they, they, they had pits where they dug out wells. Sometimes they'd go, they'd go dry. So he threw him into a dry well and, uh, and left him. And this particular brother, he was the oldest one named Reuben. He said, I'll come back for you. I'll come back for him later. That was his plan. But Reuben got caught up with the family business uh, and, and got sidetracked and went out uh, to deal with uh, some family business. And then he was, he, on his way back, he came back and found the well was empty. He just lost it. His little brother, the one that he's supposed to be taken care of as the oldest brother is not in the well. So he goes back to his other brothers and said, what happened to Joseph? The other brother said, we sold him. Here's the money. We'll split it with you. They sold their brother. And many of us have gone through these same scenarios it may not may have been not that uh, 
that you were sold to the Ishmaelites like Joseph was, but many of us have been sold for the highest bidder when it comes to uh, the things we had were stolen from us, maybe a business, maybe other relationships. There's a lot of different areas that we can be sold, we've been sold out in our lifetime by un, un, uh, people that had the wrong intentions that, that used our goodness against us. This has happened to me and it's happened to many of you. So these areas is to grow the wisdom of God on how to handle people when we come in to the blessings that God wants for us. And as long as our heart is bleeding because of these things, you got thrown down a well, uh, Joseph went on to, to, uh, to be uh, bought by a man by Potiphar. From there, he gained great favor and everything that Potiphar gave to him turned to gold and everything that Joseph did was favor. Joseph was a good, good looking man. His, his wife uh, had the hots for him. Uh, she couldn't get what she wanted, so um, she falsely accused him. He ends up in prison. And in prison, he rises to the top again. You see, when we give our hearts to the Lord, and no matter what the enemy throws at us, we're gonna continually rise to the top if we don't allow the enemy to tempt us with bitterness, resentment, hatred, and want to get back at our enemies. As long as we have that type of attitude where we are giving it all to the Lord and we're releasing these people from our hearts to him and he's the judge, we allow him to judge between us and him and them, then the Lord's able to take that situation and cause you to rise to the top in no matter what area that you may feel that you're locked into. So God is able to take you from the bottom and bring you to the top every time. Keeping your eyes on Jesus, he'll bring you from the bottom and take you to the top in whatever area you are, find your place, self, in life. But we have to be aware that we prosper and we're in health even as our soul prospers. So we have to get healed from this area of envy where we've been envied against and all kinds of evil had come against us through others, we have to get our soul healed from that in order to receive the best that God wants for us. So um, his brothers, okay, they sold him it. Okay, now, now he's, in, he's, in, um, he's, in, uh, he's in, he's in the dungeon. He rises to the top. The person over that pretty much checks out and allows Joseph to run the whole thing. Without his oversight, Joseph runs the whole prison and he's telling everybody else where to be and how to run, how to, how to do this, and uh, he's entrusted. So this is the way God does things. So anyhow, Joseph keeps on being faithful with the little. Whatever God has, has him doing, he just puts his heart into it and he does his best and God keeps on blessing him. Then one day, Two men came into the prison that were sent. They were part of the king's inner circle, the president's inner circle. And these two men were very close to the king. One was his, his baker, and the other one was his butler. His, his butler um, was the guy that he trusted to taste all of his wine. This guy, not only was he, was he uh, to taste his wine to see if it had the right taste, that it was the best, it was aged just right, and so forth and so on, this man was um, the man in charge that he would take a sip of every wine, every cup of wine that a drink before the king had it to make sure the king didn't die. So this guy had to be, the king had to trust him and somehow or another, he broke his trust with the king and got thrown in prison. So the king, over the course of the time, uh, the, uh, well, the baker and the butler ended up there. Both of them ended up in uh, a bad way with the king. And uh, both of them's in, in there and they, they have dreams both on the same night. Both of them very similar dreams but with very different consequences. So the one had the dream 
of being restored to the king, restored to his position. The other one had the dream that in the interpretation of the dream was that he lost his head. In other words, he was, um, he was executed because of the crime that he committed against the king. So, um, so these two, it actually went exactly the way Joseph had interpreted the dreams. Joseph interpreted the dreams for them. And the funny thing is about this is that he's interpreting dreams even when his dream hasn't come true yet. His dreams haven't been fulfilled yet, but yet he knows that he's faithful with what he has because he knows how to interpret dreams and he's going to interpret their dreams and be a blessing to them. So he tells the guys, he says, when, when you get in the king's presence, when you're restored, then just say a good word for me and get me out of this dark place. So the king said that this goes on for two years after the guys are out. They've been out for, for this guy's been out for two years and didn't, didn't even remember Joseph, forgets all about the prison situations, forgets about the dream, forgets about the interpretation, forgets about Joseph. Goes on for two years. And don't you know that in his heart, as he's going through these hard situations, he must have, think, he must have thought at times, God's not there. God's not here. He had to fight the same things that we many times have had to fight. But he's there, and he knows. God knows, and it is timing. He'll bring these things about. You, the words that God has placed in your heart, those dreams that God's placed there in his time, and he will bring them forth. As long as we're faithful, we have to be faithful with whatever God places in our hand to do now. So, so Joseph goes and uh, or, or this, this uh, king had some dreams. And you know how you can be in a conversation with someone and then all of a sudden they, they trigger something in your mind. Something that happened years ago that you completely blacked out of your mind. You don't even have it there. And all of a sudden, it's there again because of the conversation. So this happened to this butler this butler's sitting there with the king and he's, he's, he's ministering to the king. He's giving the king his wine and, 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 and the king starts talking about this dream that he has to his court and the butler overhears it. And uh, he had these two dreams and he brings in all the wise men and uh, he, he asked them to interpret his dreams and none of them sufficed whatever they had to say did not suffice what he knew to be true in his heart about these dreams that they did not interpret his dreams so uh the butler had this uh this this brain shift he finally remembered what happened in the prison and he's thinking uh wow i haven't talked to him about my friend the dream interpreter interpreter so he sends to, so the king hears about this guy that can interpret dreams. And, and, and the king sends for Joseph. Joseph shaves, get himself ready. They place the, uh, a, a nice coat on him, take off the uh, prison's garments and put on a nice robe on him and got him ready to see the king. He went in to see the king. He interpreted the dreams for the king. And the king, after it was all said and done, gave all of his authority and all the wealth of the country, everything they owned, he gave to Joseph. That's a great story. And I believe that, that there, there are levels of that in our life that God wants to entrust to us in this anointing called the Joseph anointing, but there has to be this healing in our hearts where we've been devastated through envy, through jealousy, where we may have not yielded to ourselves, but our heart has been broken because of others that we've had held tight to us that broke our heart because of jealousy and envy. You see, um, let's see here. He had favor with God. He had favor with God and he had favor with man. Everything to, he put his hand to prospered. He didn't look at the small. 
things that he had. He just kept his eye on what God had promised him. And God was faithful to bring those things about. He held on to his dreams. In the midst of mate, major um, contradictions, major contradictions. And that's where we have a lot of contradictions. It may be hitting you in the face for years, the contradictions to your dreams, the contradictions that come through these places of envy and jealousy. Now, one thing I, I, God, God, is, God is also teaching us is wisdom. You see, Jesus, this is a very important part, and don't, don't, don't think this is, this is a real important part that I have. if I can convey this to you, it will save you so much time in progressing towards your dream. Is uh, through all that Joseph suffered, he learned a lot of wisdom. And it says that Jesus himself was perfected by the things he suffered. See, Joseph was tested. The word of God was tested all the while he was in prison. He was tested. He was tested when he was sold. He was tested, tested, tested. And he passed each test. And then God promoted him. But when his brothers came, because there's also that, that time when these people that have envied us come back into our lives. What then? What do we do when those people come back in our life? Do we automatically just, well, I forgave him, so I'll just, I'll, just, uh, I'll just put him back in the same position he had before in my heart and uh, act like nothing ever happened? Well, I know that sounds real Christian-like, but that's not what Joseph did. If you read on about what Joseph did to his brothers, he tested them. If you remember about the sacks, he, he tested to, and, he, and, and he found out whether or not they have the same heart towards their younger brother as he had towards him. Because Joseph had, these, the, all these brothers that did this to him, these terrible things to him, they were all half-brothers. Joseph had a blood-blood brother born by the same dad and the same mommy. His name was Benjamin. And Joseph used his brothers to find out whether Benjamin, whether they were, uh, they would be towards Benjamin the same way they were towards him, to see if their hearts had changed, see if he could trust them. Are these worthy men? In fact, in the New Testament, there's a place where Christ says, "Go and preach in all the world." He sends out his his, his seventy. He sends out seventy two by two. And said, go into every town and village and speak to them about the kingdom of heaven. He sends them out in two. And he says, when you go into the house, you determine whether this house is worthy. Get this. If it's worthy, you leave your peace upon it. If it's not worthy, you draw your peace back to yourself. Keep your peace and go your way. God wants us wise as serpents, harmless as doves. So we have to look at this picture of Joseph and how the wisdom of God was on him to determine whether his brothers had changed. So that's how we really need to, to really uh, ask the Lord, has this person changed? And allow the Lord to determine in your heart how to best go about uh, using the wisdom of Joseph in that situation to draw out of that person the, if there's envy still there, if there's jealousy there, if, it's, if there's still contentment still there, uh, uh, what? Contempt there, wrong word. Um, then you're able to draw that out of them by the wisdom and the grace that Joseph had to find out. Now, Joseph had an advantage because they didn't know who he was. He was dressed differently. He was, he, he was, he was like king of, king of the country and they didn't recognize him. Um, and he's able to use uh, interpreters for himself. But there's ways that God's going to give you wisdom. Ask God. He says, if anyone lacks wisdom, ask me, and he'll give to you. So you ask the Lord for wisdom and how to find out whether this person's changed. You don't have to invite them in back into that same place in your heart. Proverbs says, protect your heart with all diligence, for out of it comes the issues of life. 
So get your own heart healed up from these areas by forgiving and forgiving. When I say forgiveness, I mean releasing them totally to the Lord. No more judgments over them. No more hatred towards them. No more uh, trying to get back at them. You're releasing all the bitterness to God. You're releasing all the pain, everything they did, you're releasing it into the wounds of Christ on the cross, allowing him to take the burden of those sins upon himself. So I don't know. I mean, I think there's probably quite a few people that I'm talking to here. And we're just going to go ahead and deal with some of this stuff because we want to have the wisdom of Solomon. You saw, see, Solomon had such wisdom, and we talked about the things that Joseph suffered, but we don't often talk about the things that Solomon suffered in order to have the wisdom that he had. Uh, I know that there must have been some type of jealousy between the brothers, and in fact, I believe that there was a great amount of suffering that came to the whole family when a brother of his by the name of uh, Absalom tried to take the throne, and then another brother of his name, uh, his brother, another one, another one of his brothers uh, tried, tried to take the throne. Also, was, his name was uh, Ammon. Both of these tried to take the throne. And actually, Ammon and Absalom drew away the whole family to themselves, turned them against the father, turned them against their brother uh, Solomon in order to obtain the throne. So Solomon knows what it's like to be rejected by the family and to have the situation of uh, like a mutiny uh, when it came to his position in the family and where God had positioned him. It was that his two of his brothers try, envied him and tried to pull it away from them illegitimately. And many of us have had many situations like this that's happened in our lives. Um, but the thing is that Absalom, uh, Solomon going through all these situations gave him the wisdom that when he went to judge Israel, he was amazing. He had, the, he had the wisdom of God in knowing how to minister to the people and now be able, being able to discern between the real person that, re, that really owns the situation, such as these two ladies that came into the court. Solomon was able to read through them because he could see envy on the one and he could see the mother on the other. And this is how he did it. See, the, see, somebody that envies tries to take everything that's yours. They try to take what's yours to be theirs. And if they can't have it, they will destroy you and everything about you in order to, for you not to enjoy it. That's what envy does. It's terrible. So these two women came in, and both of them were pregnant at the same time. This is a story of them. They were both pregnant at the same time but they lived in the same house. And one night, in the middle of the night, one of the ladies had rolled on top of her baby, and the baby died in its sleep, leaving one baby. And this woman wakes up, and she realizes that she had killed her baby. So she took her baby and put it beside the other woman and took the live baby and brought the live baby and snuggled up next to her. The next morning, there was a major fight between these two ladies over this baby. And so they went to court and no one could figure it out. See, the thing is when, when you went for the king, when you went in front of the king, the other courts weren't able to decipher what's actually going on between these two women. So they went up, I mean, we have a court system in our country and we got the lower courts, and then we have the, the, the middle courts, and then we, or the, then we have the Supreme Court. So the Supreme Court is where they go to, to the king. And the king is the final judge for the country. These two women come before the king. And both of them are claiming this baby. So Solomon says, I know that one of these women is envious of the other woman because her baby's still alive. And she says, envy will consume that baby for themselves, for herself, and the envious person will consume, will uh, will allow this baby to be destroyed in order for the for there to be uh, the same amount of 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 
torture or, uh, or hurt that, they, that she feels, she wants the other person to feel it. And that's what envy does. And so he knew that envy was at work. And so he said for the officer to take his sword and cut the baby straight into half and give one half to one woman and the other half to the other woman. Now, the woman that claimed that that was her baby was like, oh, well, that's great. The other woman that was the real mama, give it to her, give it to her. I don't want the baby to, I don't want my baby to buy, die. I don't want my baby to die. Give it to her. Solomon knew right away. That's the mama. The mama doesn't want the baby to die. And she's going to do whatever it takes for the baby to live. That's mama. She's not operating in greed. She's not operating in the spirit of uh, envy and jealousy. But she's operating in love for the baby. She wants the best for the baby. That's the mama. So, um, I, I, I mean, I could get in this area of, uh, of Jesus. Jesus was a prophet. He says, uh, that he's the prophet and that the prophet is not recognized and not esteemed and not valued in his own town. I won't read the whole thing to you, but I'll, I'll sum it up. It's in Luke chapter four, I believe in four, 16 through 30. Let me see. Let me see if that's correct. Okay, yes. This is where Jesus went, goes to his whole hometown and he he reads the scroll from the Isaiah, the prophet. And in Isaiah, he talks about uh, that he's come to, uh, to uh, give liberty and set, set free those who are captive and give sight to the blind and so forth and so on. This is where he breaches that message. And uh, the people look upon him with uh, great awe. These people he grew up with and it dawns on them after he speaks with such grace and all eyes are on him. He speaks with us grace. And then they realize that he is the son of Joseph the carpenter. So he's familiar with them. They find him contemptible because he can't be anything because they've known him all his life and he can't be anything. So they are envious of them, of him. And uh, in fact, this is where his own People from his own hometown, these are like relatives, guys, try to run the man of or run the Messiah off a cliff in order to kill him. Envy, jealousy. Um, so don't be surprised if they treated Jesus like that, they'll treat us like that if we're really following after the Lord. Sometimes that will happen. I'm not wishing that on anybody, but this is actually what Jesus went to the cross. It was envy that nailed him to the cross. Potiphar said it. So the Potiphar knew that they that they sit they gave Jesus over because of envy, because of jealousy. So um, these areas, we just want God to bring healing to our souls right now in every area, so that we can go forward. We no longer want to be held back because of the pain of yesterday not being able to open our hearts to anyone anymore because we're closed off because of pain. We want God to receive the pain. He carried our pains and our sorrows. Isaiah 53 says he did this. So right now, just close your eyes wherever you are and, and just allow God to take this pain onto himself. I just want you to picture Jesus on the cross How he, hang, he hung there. Just get a good picture of him, the Mel Gibson type of, of Jesus hanging on the cross, bearing the sin of envy and jealousy upon himself. So all the envy and jealousy that's been aimed at us we just release in the wounds of Jesus all the mental torment that we've gone through, the hatred, the resentment, the bitterness, the strife, the, the, the spirit of murder that's tried to grip uh, some, of the, some of our hearts. We just release it into the wounds of Jesus. Release all bitterness, 
and all the, uh, all the uh, judgment of judging them as being the sin that they committed against us. Yes, we were submitted, we were, we, were, we were sinned against, we recognize that, and we recognize the areas that there hasn't been reconciliation, we recognize that, but we bring the, these things to the cross, we bring the areas of, um, of manipulation, where we've been, manipulation, been manipulated, controlled, abused, we bring it to the cross, and release it in the wounds of Christ on the tree. Release all the envy, all the sin that we've been sinned against through the spirit of envy. We release it into the wounds of Christ on the cross. Release our rights of vengeance into the cross. We release it right now. Release it. Release them, placing their hands in Jesus' hands, no longer taking the responsibility to fix anything. In Jesus' name, we release them to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. So, many of you, some of you, may not know the Lord. Some of you have walked away from the Lord. Some of you, um, well, all of us, all of us need to come back to the Lord tonight. If you don't know him, you're thinking, man, I'd have a real hard time forgiving anybody if they did all that to me. Maybe you don't have the ability to forgive anybody because you don't sense his presence on the inside of you. Maybe you walked away from the Lord and you have a hard time with your emotions and all these things that have come against you. You don't know how to deal with them. So we just bring it before the Lord right now, bring our hearts to him. Instead of trying to clean up ourselves, trying to clean up our act, trying to make ourselves right before him, we just bring our broken hearts to you, Lord. Would you put our hearts back together? Would you just now come into my life and change me? I wanna be like Jesus. I want to love like he loved. I want to be a light to the world around me. Come into my heart. I'm giving my life totally over to you. All of it right now. In Jesus' name. Now if you have walked away from the Lord, just come back home. Lord, just, I just give myself totally to you again afresh and renew my life to you. I belong to you. I don't belong to anyone else. I belong to you. I give my life back, life back to you. I give all of it. I give you every broken place. I'm asking you to heal me right now from every place I've looked in the brokenness of others. They've, they've, they've used me. They've hurt me. Yes, but I'm giving it all to you. And I place everyone into your hands right now. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, if you've given your life back to the Lord, you've strayed, or if you uh, have given your life to the Lord for the first time, the Bible says that if you're ashamed of him, he'll be ashamed of you. So don't be ashamed of him. Give me a, give me a, um, a message, message me um, or, or give me some type of way that you you let everyone know that you've given your life to the Lord. Be bold about it. Let the world know, and I'd like to know. Um, I'm thankful for every person that come on with me tonight. Um, Tanya, Tanya, we we miss you. I think about you almost every day. Amy and I, we talk about you. We love you. Um, uh, you say Beza? Beza? Okay, I'm getting it right. It's good to have you on with us. Thora, you're such an encouragement to us. So are you, Paul, uh, Kelly, Dave. Um, you guys are such an encouragement. 
Um, Tyler, say hello to your lovely wife, to us and your family. Um, Isaac, we love you guys too. Miss y'all. Uh, Ed, uh, Kenny, Elizabeth, we love you. Keith and uh, Danny, we love everyone on with us. Uh, bless every one of you. God keep you. God make his face to shine upon you and give you peace in Jesus' name. Bless your week. Bless everything you put your hand to. In Jesus' name and the love of God. Amen.